The latest developer Q&A for Microsoft Flight Simulator contained a ton of great information, which included improvements to graphic settings on PC, performance optimizations, as well as some changes to the flight models, plus a whole lot more. So, let's jump in and take a look. So, let's start with improvements to the flight model as well as some planes. As Hobo have been taking real airplanes out and mapping sets of moves such as full rudder or pitching and yawing, they've then been capturing all the data for this on a plane-by-plane -plane basis. The data is then applied to the in-sim versions of the same plane. The idea here is to fine-tune the in-sim planes as much as possible in an attempt to get them as realistic as possible. So far, Sobo have done this with seven planes, that's all three turboprops, the two Cessna 172s and the two Cessna 152s. The one in the example video, of course, is the Cessna 172. Asobo are also planning on doing the same with several other planes as well in the future. These changes are coming to a Sim Update 4. Asobo have also been working on turboprop improvements. The improvements will be rolled out across the next few updates. However, one change that Asobo wanted to speak about right now, which will be part of Sim Update 4, is the torque and RPM relationship. Asobo briefly demonstrated this with the Grand Caravan in the video you can see on the screen right now. Things were moving a little faster for the purposes of the video, simply so that it could be demonstrated. I've timestamped the Asobo's live stream, so if you want to hear their explanation on all of this, the segment is around 3 minutes long, it's well worth a watch if you have time for that. You can find the link in the video description. Moving on to sim improvements, Asobo touched on the upcoming changes to the Garmin G1000 and the G3000. Now we know these are going to be some extensive overhauls here, but for right now there's really no new details on this, just a reiteration that working title are making good progress on the update which will be rolled out over sim updates 4, 5 and 6. Performance improvements were also touched upon, Asobo say they have some fixes already in the sim for this. However, the big improvements for PC will be coming at the same time as the Xbox release, as these will finally bring a DirectX 12 support to the sim. In terms of a few specifics, memory optimization has been improved by three times, when compared to a scene for scene. The aim here will be to use the performance games to improve sim details and complexity. Further, Asobo want to improve the overall visuals for Microsoft Flight Simulator on PC, so that it can be pushed beyond the current levels available on the Ultra settings for PC, so that basically there will be an additional level beyond Ultra. Bottom line, the optimizations aren't about downgrading graphics, but making improvements so that the current performance can be improved, but also so that visuals can be pushed even further in the future. Moving on to bugs. There's been a pretty significant bug I've seen people mention in the past. Fortunately, it didn't affect me, but I do know it hit quite a few people. It basically uh, it caused players to lose their logbooks. So the bug caused this by this has now been fixed, so it shouldn't affect anyone in future. However, Asobo still need to investigate the issue to see what actually went wrong with people's logbooks. Unfortunately, Asobo were fairly evasive when it came to addressing whether or not logbook data would actually be returned to players who have lost it, and uh, the community manager did address this particular question, but the developers kind of didn't really give much in the way of a direct answer, unfortunately. Now, in terms of weather, the devs didn't want to go into detail on this just yet, but they felt it was as they felt it was a bit too early, but they said something significant will be coming in Sim Updates 4 and 6. This is in regards to weather and wind readings not being accurate. Long range night lighting still has an issue. This isn't going to be fixed just yet, but should be uh, some fixes going in for Sim Update 6. In terms of the wishlist, Fly-By-Wire's A320 is getting closer. It's the number one thing on the wishlist, however Sobo didn't have anything new to add on this just yet, although they did say they're in constant talks with Fly-By-Wire and had a meeting with them just last week. Replay functionality is something that's been in high demand ever since the sim released, and this is now in the design phase. Now intriguingly, the devs want there to be something far more to this than just a simple replay functionality, as they wanted to have a lot more features beyond just that. For example, they would like to be able to add save states, so that you could actually replay the replay. So this one is still a long way off, 
but the devs would like feedback or suggestions on this on what you'd like to see with the replay functionality. Uh, I suppose you can go and add that feedback on the official forums. So moving on to community questions. Air traffic is something that is important to a Sobo, however it doesn't appear to be happening just yet. Ultimately, the AI traffic does come back to the performance issue that we mentioned earlier, and is another reason that the devs are working so hard on improving optimizations. Before more stuff can be added, basically, things need to be in a much better state. Meanwhile, the community developer AIG are working on offline traffic mod. I'll be sure to include a link to everything available for that in the video description. Now, on the subject of aerosol density for humidity and dust, this is a question that's been asked on the official forums. Will it ever be improved? Currently, the atmospheric simulation cannot reproduce high density of aerosol scattering within the environment such as you might see inside clouds. Although, yeah, it can do it in clouds, but we're talking about the wider aspect here, so uh, dust pollution and things like that. But this all comes down to a limitation that basically prevents anything like that from happening. In short, it's a limitation with the current uh, atmospheric rendering simulation. However, the devs do want to reboot this simulation and improve upon it. That will be a long process, maybe six months or more, but meanwhile, Sobo do feel that they might be able to push the current system so that visibility could be reduced to just a few thousand meters. But again, this will take some investigation first, although that said, it will be nice to have some improvements before the complete overhaul comes further down the line. Moving on to Xbox development, the dev team say that this is progressing well, and they're currently working on performance for the console with the aim to improve things by another 5 frames per second or so above where they are currently, although they didn't give any indication on where the current frame rate actually is at. Now, sim interaction is also another area where a lot of work is being done. There's a specific focus on cockpit interactions for this, which of course on consoles would need to work purely with the controller, although they did say consoles uh, being able to support keyboards will also be an option. Essentially, they are in the final polishing stage then for the Xbox. Interestingly, they're also planning on a beta release for the Microsoft Flight Simulator on Xbox, so something to look out for. On the subject of all the issues that have been, been introduced with the various patches recently, the various problems and whatnot, Sobo were willing to talk about this. They acknowledged that they have been plenty of issues. They understand that this is a source of frustration for the uh, community. And they pointed out, essentially, it comes down to the number of branches that they are working on simultaneously. They gave a figure of around about 50 different branch builds. Basically, they feel they have two options at this point. The first is to slow down development, that is the rate of content releases, which really is something they do not want to do. And they know it's also something that players don't want to see. So the other option is to improve upon the process and increase testing. The second option is the one that they are going for, and they will build upon this as they move forward. The short beta test that we had just before World Update 4 was a part of this, although it was only limited to 300 testers. The reason for this is that the beta test was organized very late in the day, and the 300 tester limit was partially due for that, but also due to resource constraints. Essentially, working with 300 people, getting feedback from them, is much easier than working with 3,000 testers. But it was a start and the next test will be put together in a much more complete way. So good to see that Asobo are working on this. Finally, water physics are currently not in the game. This is something that was pointed out very early on, but it is something that is being worked on and it's something that Asobo have recently begun some uh, testing on. So no release date for this just yet, but it is something that's coming. So that pretty much brings us to the end of all the current new information from the developers and an end to this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.